Hello, I'm Atubo George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we have stepped into a new week, and remember, we are dealing on prayers. Teach me how to pray. It's important because the Spirit of God has said this is the month of prayer, meaning the Spirit of God is going to be stirring us in our hearts to pray. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, which I have a lot in my spirit, that it's something is just staring up in my spirit, I need to share with you. Praise God. But let's make demand for our daily bread. Are you ready? Join me now and say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Now, over the weekend, something happened. And since then, my, my spirit have just been stirred. And you see, there's something that happens when you know you have heard from the Lord concerning a matter. And then you see that thing being misinterpreted in many quarters, you would not want to keep quiet. Why? Jesus said, you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in all Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. Meaning, how do we become witnesses of Jesus? The things he has revealed to us, we must speak it out. That's what it means to be a witness of Jesus. What he has said to you, don't keep quiet about it now i'm talking about the um said apology that that the adeboye made concerning a statement he made some years back concerning tithing and, and actually the statement he made was that those who don't tithe they risk making heaven now i remember when that message came out and truly speaking when I heard that statement, I had to go look for the video and I, and I watched it and I was, I was troubled. Now, even though, though I, I believe in Titan and the Lord have taught me the seriousness of Titan, which made me write a book in the year 2008, I wrote a book and the title of the book is Titan, a must, not an option. And I still stand by the words of those book, which you can find online. I think it's on Stella.com. I'll try and post the link. Um, under this video so you can you can assess that book now but though i believe in tithing so much and i practice and i teach it hearing that they will make that statement that people who don't tithe will not make heaven i was a bit troubled but like i do with every other thing i went before the lord and i said lord an elder have spoken why would he make this kind of statement isn't this going too far and you see, as God's children, we must cultivate the habit of walking in truth. You see, men can make mistakes. Men can speak by their knowledge at the time. That's why the Bible clearly told us that the plan of God is that we don't depend on men. In fact, Jeremiah said, cost is he who puts his hope. In man. Now put your hope in man doesn't only mean looking for money from man. Even your even the wisdom that you live by, if it's by a man, you will end up in trouble. No matter how good your intentions are, no matter how good the intentions of that man is, because there are situations that will not adjust to that wisdom. So God's intention was that we be taught by him. John reiterated that in, in, in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 27. He said, as the Holy Spirit teaches us, which is true. He said, you have no need that any man should teach, but as the Spirit of God teaches you, you should abide by the things he has taught you. Jesus clearly stated that I am not going away and leaving you comfortless. I will send the Holy Spirit to you who will guide you into all truth. Another time he said he will teach you all things. All this is in line with what the prophecy that God said to Jeremiah. That in that day no one will say to his neighbor, Know the Lord, for they shall know me 
from the list of the greatest. Isaiah also prophesied. I say, all your children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. Now that has been my understanding for many years. And, and, and I learn from men. Don't get me wrong. I learn from men. I listen to a lot of preachers. I pick words from what they say. Now, when I hear something that is above my understanding, I don't just discard it, no matter how wrong it sounds. I don't, just, especially when it's from someone who I trust his spirit. There are people who, you know, they are just charlatans so whatever they say, you know, but there are people who have had a diligent work with God. There are people who have had a diligent work with God for which I respect him greatly for. So when he made that statement, I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, I truly began to pray for him. And in my place of prayer, the word of the Lord came to me. You see, you understand what I'm, I'm saying? I'm going to say what I'm going to say in this broadcast. And the word of the Lord came to me and he says, Who told you he is wrong? I was like, but Lord... <laughs> Everything I know about salvation, everything I know about, and the Lord says, who told you he is wrong? Now, if you know the Lord, you would learn. When you hear him say a statement like that, I went before him, I said, okay, Lord, please teach me what I don't know. Teach me. You've taught me about tithing. I believe in tithing. I believe every child of God must tithe. But to say that, you will not go to heaven if you don't tithe. And the first understanding that came to me, this is me now in practice. The first understanding that came to me is everyone. Now, when I say make heaven, I hope you understand what I'm talking about. We in, in Christendom is a term we use as one who will qualify to reign with Jesus Christ. See, one who will qualify to reign with Jesus Christ. Now, that's the general when you hear people say make heaven on end of days or end of time, we are all talking about ones who will reign with Jesus Christ. Okay. So he said, the Lord said to me, he said, will anyone make heaven that is not led by the spirit of God? My answer is no. Then he said to me, he said, if you are led by the spirit of God, and even in every area of your life, when it comes to finances, do you believe the Spirit of God will lead you to tight? I said, yes, I believe so. I truly believe so. Then it dawned on me. I said, wow, such truth. Such truth. And, and, and now, if you don't tight, you are saying it's either you were disobedient to the Spirit of God or the Spirit of God did not lead you to tight. If the Spirit of God did not lead you to tithe, then there's a problem. Because He's supposed to lead you to everything that Jesus represents and teaches or taught. Okay? Now, if He didn't lead you to tithe, there's a big problem. If He led you to tithe and you disobeyed Him, there's still a problem. In all cases, by your disobedience, you will lose making heaven, like, you know, like I explained earlier. And then if He didn't lead you to tithe, then you have a problem that he may not lead you to heaven. Now, that was the initial understanding the Spirit of God gave to me. I know one thing about the Lord. He gives us his word precept upon precept, line upon line. Now, this interpretation came to me a few years ago, about two years ago. Now, it opened my understanding again, made me go revisit the teachings he has given me concerning tithe. And then, a few months ago, the Lord took me up to another dimension. Now, I've shared this, I've done some series on teaching on it, but particularly because of this, I said, let me explain further the things the Lord spoke to me concerning. The question then is, now that I did we, came out to say, oh, he apologized for making that statement. And then he said, it is not scripture. And then that's the part I want us to deal with. And I'm dealing with this, not because of the person of that, because of his person, because of the influence. And then, you know, it's changing all social media and everybody, even misinterpreting the body of truth he was sharing. Now, because he said, I apologize for making that statement. It is not scripture. He didn't say, I apologize for telling you that tithing is important. That's not what he said. He didn't say he doesn't believe in tithing. Again, go listen to the message. 
But now that statement that I apologize for saying that if you don't tithe, you will not make heaven. And then he said, that's not what the scriptures say. But let's look at the scriptures. And I pray the Lord give you understanding concerning this. Let's look at the scriptures. What is the qualification for those who will make heaven? I'm using that term like I explained further. There is no other place you can be sure of getting truth concerning this, but what Jesus himself shared. Now look at Matthew chapter 25 and verse 31. This is Jesus speaking. Please follow me. Now he said, When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. So Jesus was speaking of the end. Before me shall be gathered all nations, and they shall separate, and he, that's Jesus, shall separate them from one another as a sheep divided, as a shepherd divided his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on his left hand. Then shall the king say unto them that are on his right hand, Come, please follow this carefully. Come ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For, meaning because, are you following me? For I was unhungered and you gave me meat. I was thirsty and you gave me drink. I was a stranger and you took me in. I was naked and you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when did we, when saw we thee and hungered and fed thee, or thirsty and gave thee drink? Now, let's jump to a few verse, verse 41. And this is where we're really going to. Now, understand the line of thoughts. Now, look at verse 41. Now, remember, he said he just spoke to those on his right hand. He divided them to right and the goat on the left. Now, verse 41 says, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, that's the goats, Depart from me, ye cursed, unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungered, and you gave me no meat. Now, the same things Jesus spoke about that made people enter into life is the same thing that made people enter into everlasting fire. That's lake of fire. Now, this is the end of this, okay? And Jesus is saying, what is going to determine those who enter into life and those who enter into death? Now, death means lake of fire. Is this thing. He didn't say anything else that we have been preaching in clear terms like that. But but now that's that's another conversation. But look at what he said. He said the reason people will enter into life is because he was they were he was hungry and they gave him food. He was thirsty, he was naked, he was in prison, and they visited him. Now the, those who go into the lake of fire, he said the reason they will go into the lake of fire is because he came to them hungry they did not give him food now you look at this statement you begin to wonder and this is exactly what the holy ghost asked him he said is it just is it justice from god to send people to hell or to the lake of fire because they were not benevolent with their resources now i want you to think now, this is a statement jesus made okay and then you don't go because that's, that's, the, that's the mistake a lot of us made, make. We don't think. We just, and Jesus said that, so that is what it is. We don't think. Is Jesus saying something deeper than, than what we are reading? And Because that's the truth. When a prophet speaks, you think that you just take his word for face value. No. No. To understand the words of a prophet, you've got to have layers and layers of truths. So Jesus speaking here and says, I'm going to divide the whole nations into two, sheep and goats. And then this is my judgment. I was hungry 
They gave me food or they did not give me food. I was naked. They gave. Now, so the Lord asked me that question. Is it just for the Lord to send people to the lake of fire because they were not benevolent? If you are hungry and I refuse to give you food, it's my money. Okay? It's my money. If you were naked and I refused to clothe, even though I saw you, it's my money. You can only think of me being a bad person or being someone that doesn't care. But it is not right for you to prosecute me for that. On what basis? Please understand where I'm going with this. On what basis will a man be prosecuted for not being benevolent with his own resources? Now, you will know. I mean, no government can prosecute a rich man for not tying, I mean, this is Africa, so you can understand, or for not, um, for not feeding the poor people on his streets. He can only be advised, okay? But can a man be prosecuted for not paying his tax? Yes. People have gone to jail for tax evasion or not paying their tax at all. People have been fined for not paying their tax when they are supposed to pay their tax. So what was Jesus saying? Follow carefully now. Verse 41. He says, Thank you, Lord Jesus. Then shall he say unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire. He called them cursed ones. Now, one thing people don't realize in scriptures is Jesus will confirm the prophets and the Psalms. Okay? The law, the prophet and the Psalms. So, they did not give him food. They didn't take in strangers. And he said, because of this, they are going to the lake of fire. Please listen. Jesus said, because of this, they are going to the lake of fire. Now, truth does not stand on its own. Every truth of God's word will never stand on its own. It's got, you've got to find the truth that corresponds with that. And when you search through the whole scriptures, the only place that qualifies to this thing that Jesus said is the prophet Malachi. It's what Malachi said in Malachi chapter 3. Let's look at Malachi chapter 3. Please follow me carefully because this is so important and if we keep quiet, even when the Lord has revealed truth to us, then we'll be in the danger of judgment. Please listen. Malachi chapter 3. God speaking here. Let me start from verse 7. Even from the days of your fathers, you have gone away from my ordinances. Take note. And have not kept them. Return unto me. And I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, wherein shall we return? So Malachi is encouraging people, look, you guys have gone astray. Return to me. And he says, okay, how do we return to you? Then Malachi went forth, verse 8, he said, will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? What did Malachi respond from the word of the Lord? He said, in tithes and offerings. Then he goes on to say, ye are cursed with a curse jesus said those ones on his left hand they are cursed please understand what's going on here jesus is going to judge the world the final judgment of the world is it's about titan Malachi say, you have gone astray from following me. How did we go astray? Say, return to me and I'll return to you. How do we return? Say, tithes. Go back to tithes. And because you have been robbing God. Now, why did he call it robbery? Now, you understand why Jesus said, I will come to you hungered. You will not feed me or you did not feed me. I came to you naked. You did not clothe me. I came to you as a stranger. You did not take me in. How are we supposed to feed the poor? How are we supposed to take in the stranger? How are we supposed to clothe the naked? How? God has set it in motion from, from the very beginning. And he confirmed this with, with, with Abraham by covenant. And what is that? Tithing. 
So Malachi, and many people don't realize Malachi is an end time prophet. Malachi, the prophecy of Malachi was all connected to the end time. Go read the book of Malachi again. Malachi chapter 4 ended with talking about the lake of fire. I said, this is how this thing is going to end. You can read that for yourself. Malachi chapter 3 ended with him saying, oh, in that day, God is going to make the, the, the there's going to be a, dis, a difference between those that serve God and those that does not serve God. He was speaking of the end time. So Malachi was speaking an end time prophecy. So what Jesus was saying here in Matthew chapter 25 is confirming the prophet. This is the day the prophecy of Malachi will be fulfilled. When he says to those people, depart from me, you cursed. Malachi called them, you are cursed. So Jesus here is saying, depart from me, you cursed. Now take this, what Jesus said here, even to the law. You find Moses telling them about tithing. And then he was telling them who to give the title. You give it to the Levites, you give it to the strangers, you give it to the widows, you give it to the motherless. Now you see God instituted all these things. And at the end of the day, the world is going to be judged by these same things. So you ask me the question, those who don't tithe, do they risk going to hell? Yes, they will go to hell. However, but what if I'm benevolent? If you don't understand, I, I'm working on the book on, 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 on the, the book is titled The Seed of Abraham. And I'll, I'll soon be done with it. Because people don't understand these things. What if I, I don't give my time? I, I, I just give. You don't understand why God in the first place commanded us to tithe. You don't get it. Jesus will come for the tithes. He will come for it. He will come for it. And when you don't give him, how will he come for it? He will come in different people. When he comes to you, he's the tithe he's coming to request for. Now, you see, when people attack tithing, it's not really tithing they are, they are attacking. They are attacking the abuse of tithing. But the mistake they make is this. They take the abuse of tithing and then they say, let's cancel the whole thing. Instead of going before the Lord and asking the Lord, what is the truth concerning this matter? The church needs to understand the truth concerning tithing. Because the world is going to be judged by that same thing. He that has an ear, let him hear. Now, I don't know why that the way apologized for that statement. I don't know if it's the Lord that commanded him to, to, to apologize for that statement. Now, you know, you see, if you've worked with the Lord for a long time, you will know something about God. There are commands the Lord will even give you and he's giving you for yourself to see how you will respond to him. Now, people may misunderstand you. People may misunderstand what you meant. But you see, obedience to the Lord is paramount. So I'm not going to tell you that Adebo is wrong to have apologized. But what I'm stressing, what I'm teaching here is tithing. The world will be judged by tithing. And if you don't give God your tithe, we should be talking about how do we give God our tithe. Now, when you look at the statement of Jesus, you will understand. But now here's the, here's the twist to the whole matter. Because someone will say, I don't need to tithe. I can just be giving to the poor. Here's the twist to the matter. The twist is this. No one can fulfill these things Jesus said. Those on his right hand, except they are born again. Yes. Why? Because you see this, I was hungry and you gave me food. I was naked and you clothed me. It's not because you see naked people and you begin to feed them or clothe them. No, it's because the Holy Ghost will command you. The Holy Ghost will instruct you. The Holy Ghost will lead you. So those who are not led by the Spirit of God to do these things, they are not part of it. I pray the Lord give you understanding to this. Please, don't joke with your tithe. Go before the Lord and ask him diligently, Lord, what do I do with my tithe? How do I give? Who do I, who do you want me to give it to? That's the prayer you should be praying. And let the Spirit of the Lord direct you. That's when you will fulfill. This is the end. If you don't live your life with this in view, then you're not living for Jesus. May God bless you. 
May God open up his grace upon you. May the Lord open your eyes, even in these last days, to see that which is true. And may he strengthen your heart to do righteousness. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.